The following lesson is linked to learning outcome 2, reading and viewing. It addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to demonstrate various reading and viewing strategies for comprehension and appreciation. Learners should be able to read or view according to purpose and task. They should also be able to summarise main and supporting ideas in point form, sentences and or paragraphs. Hello, welcome, I'm Nicola Shongwe. In this block, we are focusing on summarizing. This is an important tool which we use every day in all sorts of situations. Summarizing enables you to turn large, complex amounts of information into shortened forms that are easy to tell to someone else and that are easy to remember. Being able to summarize successfully is going to help you pinpoint important information and will assist you in your studies. In our last lesson on summarizing, we learned how to skim and how to scan. In today's lesson, we're going to learn how to extract information in order to study successfully and how to construct mind maps. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify key statements and construct a short version of your work for study purposes. Now remember, these summarizing skills will help you not only in English, but also in all your other subjects that you need to study for. It's very important that you understand the text or work before you try to learn it. It's impossible to learn and remember work if you have no understanding of it. This is why I keep stressing that you should write your information in your own words rather than trying to learn somebody else's words off by heart. Another skill I keep stressing is to read with your brain as well as with your eyes. What we're going to do now is to combine these skills. Putting information in your own words and reading with your brain to look for the key statements in a text. In any passage or text, there are usually key statements with information which describes them in greater detail or which provides other facts. A key statement is information that is vitally important. If this statement is left out, the rest of the text does not make sense. If you get into the habit of identifying key statements in a text, you will be focusing on the most important information. This is a valuable skill because it's these key statements that contain the most important information and this is the kind of information that you're likely to be asked in an exam. Now let's take a look at an example of a text taken from the Sunday Times and let's see if we can identify the most important information. The hazardous life of a guerrilla fighter demands supreme sacrifices from those who choose to follow this path. Not only does it presuppose the taking of life, it also puts the lives of those who choose to pursue it in constant danger of being caught by the enemy. Let's now take out the most important information from this extract. What do you think it is? Take a closer look. This paragraph deals with the dangers of being a guerrilla fighter. Not only do you have to kill other people, but your enemies will be trying to catch you. Did you notice how I put that paragraph into my own words? You may have extracted the key information in your own way, but what I'm trying to stress is the importance of rewording the information. If you can reword it in such a way that you understand it, it will be much easier for you to remember it. 
Now let's look at the next section and see if we can identify the key statement. It is a path that award-winning poet and novelist Mongane Wale Sorote traveled during his days as an Umkondowe Sizwe, or MK, operative. So what facts emerge here? And of these, which are the most important? Well, we can state that Mongane Wale Sorote was a guerrilla fighter for Umkondowe Sizwe, the other information we're given about Sorote being a poet and a novelist is interesting, but not essential information in the context of this article. This article is focusing on him being a guerrilla and an MK operative. We're also given information that he is a poet and a novelist. Now let's look and see what the next paragraph reveals. I met up with the former guerrilla to talk about his latest novel, Scatter the Ashes and Go, at an upmarket restaurant at Rosebank's Park Hyatt Hotel, the haunt of deal makers and power brokers. We now need to decide which of this is essential information. What do you think is more important? Where the interview took place or what was said? Clearly, we don't need details about where the writer of the article and Sirote met. So what information do we need? We learn that Sirote has written a novel entitled Scatter the Ashes and Go, and that he actually met with the writer of this newspaper article. Let's quickly recap. From this article, we have identified a few key statements. The life of a guerrilla fighter is dangerous. Mongane Wali Sorote was an operative for Umkonto We Sizwe. And Sorote has written a novel entitled Scatter the Ashes and Go. If you had to study this article for a test, this is the information that you would study, and this is the information that would most likely be questioned. Practice this technique to extract key statements from a text. Once you have identified the main points, you will be able to remember the information easily. Always use your own words to jot down key words from a text. When you understand information, it is more likely to stick in your memory. Now we're going to move on to the second skill for this lesson, which is creating a mind map. This will also help you to extract key information. A mind map shows the way your thoughts should go when you're trying to sort or remember information. Like a road map, a mind map is graphic, that is, it uses pictures. Different people's minds work differently, and you might find that your mind works better with graphic information rather than verbal information. This means that you might work better with pictures than with words. Now, if we had to construct a mind map about the information we've just read about Sirote, this is what it might look like. If you had to study this information on Sirote for an exam, it would be easy for you to remember that there are three important pieces of information. Firstly, he is a former MK operative. Secondly, he is a poet and writer. And thirdly, he has written a novel. In addition to helping you study for exams, using a mind map is a useful way of planning information to be used in an essay. If you had to write a biography on Sirote, you could go back to the original mind map and add more information. If you were going to turn this mind map into an essay, you could use each of your three main ideas as paragraphs and could use the extra information that we have added in to flesh out the ideas. So, Sorote is a former MK operative and was involved in guerrilla warfare. He is a poet and writer and has won awards. He has written a novel entitled Scatter the Ashes and Go. A mind map will help you to remember the key points in the information that you have selected. This applies to all your subjects, not only English. Well, now that you have seen how useful a mind map can be, you're probably wondering, 
How do I construct a mind map? The best way to construct a mind map is to begin with the central or main idea. This is often the main section that you are studying. Then you move on and look at the subsections. Pretend that you need to learn the themes in a play or novel. How will you create a mind map to help you remember the details? This is what to do. Write down the name of the play or novel. Map the main themes of the novel around this. For each main theme, write down the sub-themes or smaller related themes. For each sub-theme, write down the characters' names or plot reminders. Remember, each item of your mind map cannot exist without other information. It is a reminder of the detail you have learnt. The mind map serves only as a reminder of the important point. Let's recap on how to construct a mind map. Write down the name of the play or novel. Map the main themes of the novel around this. For each main theme, write down the sub-themes or smaller related themes. For each sub-theme, write down the characters' names or plot reminders. Once you have drawn and memorized your mind map, you can redraw it in a test or exam. Each point on the mind map will remind you of details that you have studied. This is why it's impossible for you to study from somebody else's mind map. They will be reminded of their particular details, but you might not. The task today involves identifying key points and making a mind map of a text you have studied in English. Take a section of your English set work either a novel or a play. Identify the key points. Write them in your own words as clearly as you can. Put these points into the form of a mind map. Learn your mind map. Now you will have this information at your fingertips when you need it in a test or exam. Right. If you practice what we have learned today, you will be gaining very valuable skills. Well, that's all we have time for today, so see you next time.